How you doing, beautiful? I'm good, my king. You enjoy the ride? Yes, that was a good. nice nippy ride. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Man, I'm telling you, the seasons are starting to change. Uh oh. Ooh, okay. Come on in, big guy. We got room. Ooh. Hey, nice. Nice, bro. Nice, man. Pretty good, brother. Ooh, hoo -hoo. Yes, sir, man. Motorcycle parking, y'all. Good nation, check this out, bros, bro. It's this my guy, Nathan. Listen to this, man. He has a Harley and he also has a scooter. What you doing with your scooter, bro? Taking the scooter on the Scooter Cannonball Run 2023 in June. It'll go from uh, San Clemente, California to Hilton Head. Eight days on a scooter. Ooh, wait. Any GPS or? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I use the phone. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Hit the phone up and go. Wow, on the scooter, bro? On the scooter. And that's the scooter there, guys. 248. Right. 248 going to be my number. So, man, support him, man. Give him a huge two thumbs hey, up, thanks. man. We got you, bro. Yeah, pray for me. All right, bros and bros, check it out, man. So, for those who follow the channel, you guys know that we have motorcycle parking here at our church. And for those who want to, man, visit where me and wifey serve, our address is 55 Al Henderson Boulevard, Savannah, Georgia, 31419. And look at this, man. Check it out. Look at that beautiful cross, bros and bros. Oh, how awesome is that, man? Hi again, Wood Nation. Hope y'all are doing well. We had another phenomenal volunteer experience with Hubby doing traffic and me doing the greeting. It is now Hubby's turn to share the sermon notes. We hope you enjoy. All right, what's going on, Wood Nation, bros and bros? Look, just like wifey said, we had yet another great service. Y'all know I got to put my right hand up, man. Dude, I hope you guys are out enjoying this beautiful weather. Like, real talk, man. This is beautiful, man. Man, thank God for the weather. Thank God for this day. And get out and enjoy it. Mm -hmm. Me and wifey came out and enjoyed it at our service, of course. And um, actually, man, uh, the uh, Henderson, our Henderson campus pastor, which is uh, Harrison Huxford, brought the sermon on this morning. And the topic was made to advance the spirit versus idols. All right, y'all. Let's dive in. All right, so I'm going to read to you the book of Acts, the 19th chapter, verses 6 and 7. And it says, When Paul placed his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came on them, and they spoke in tongues and prophesied. There were about 12 men in all. All right, so now I'm going to read to you the book of John, the 14th chapter, verses 16 and 17. And it says this, I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever, the Spirit of truth. Y'all know I got to read that again, man. The book of John, the 14th chapter, verses 16 and 17. I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you. And he will be with you forever, the Spirit of truth. All right, so one of the things that Harrison said was this. The Holy Spirit is with you, providing what you need to accomplish his will. 
I got to read that one more time, y'all. The Holy Spirit is with you, providing what you need to accomplish his will. John Calvin said this, man's nature, so to speak, is a perpetual factory of idols. Y'all know I got to read that again, bros and broets. John Calvin said this, man's nature, so to speak, is a perpetual factory of idols. All right, so another thing that was said was this here. Idols give us a false sense of worth and identity. Man, I got to read that over again, bros and broets. Idols give us a false sense of worth and identity. Be certain that you're not holding your material at a standard where you should. Ooh, you okay? You okay, yeah, babe? Smack my face. <laughs> I think that was a grasshopper. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I was like, it's babe. Like, you're an idol. You're an idol. No. <laughs> the grasshopper uh, hopped on my queen, y'all. And, and uh, Sweetie Beauty do not like insects at all. So, mm -hmm. but you good? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, man. Um, uh, just be mindful. You know, it's, it's okay to have things. Career, um, your marriage, everything is on point. That's that's awesome. God want us to make sure that we keep those things in order. But he also want us to be sure that we don't put those things before him. Right. All right. Uh, one of the issues with the uh, 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 children of Israel, God didn't have an issue with them having gold. He didn't even have issues with them molding that gold into objects. But when they worship what they mold into uh some type of shape, form, and object. I think it was like a golden calf or something like it that. Was. That's where the issue came in. So God want us to have things and he want us to have nice things. We work hard for these things. He just don't want these things to have us, That's all right? Good. He don't want us to remove him from being the center of attention, all right? Because our God is a jealous God. And when I say that, I don't mean like, you know, you're going to come outside and your tires on a flat, your windows on your car bus. You're like, dang, Jesus. No, <laughs> but he's a jealous God, meaning like, hey, God want that attention. That's why he said, hey, I'm the king of kings. I'm the Lord of lords. You know, God does something awesome in your life, man. Just just thank him. Even the scripture says, man, that is the will of Christ in our lives. Just to be thankful, just to thank God. That That's literally it to, to give your life to Christ and just simply thank God for the things that you have. All right. So just be mindful that you're not allowing material things to uh, you're not leading your life uh, guided by material things. All right. Mm -hmm. um, and images and objects, etc. So how do we keep ourselves from going down that rabbit hole of idolatry? All right. Well, here are three things to help with that. The Holy Spirit gives. The Holy Spirit helps and the Holy Spirit defends. All right. If you're open to all three you my friend bros and broettes will not be sucked in into the spirit of idolatry all right the holy spirit gives the holy spirit helps and the holy spirit defends all right bros and broettes so in closing i just want to give you some spiritual tools that you can take with you throughout your daily walk with christ pertaining to the holy spirit all right there are only two kinds of people in this world those led by the holy spirit and those led by their own desires mm. wow two kinds of people in the world bros and broets those who are led by the holy spirit and those who are led by their own desires okay here are four things about being led by the holy spirit one listen for his voice listen for his voice you must listen for his voice to be led by the holy spirit the old testament prophet elijah in first kings 18 discovered that god doesn't speak through the wind earthquake or fire God simply speaks through a still small voice if you are not careful you can miss the spirit's voice in the midst of the noise and distraction if you are not careful you can miss that still small voice in the midst of noise and distraction and remember what we said some time ago that's the enemy's job is to distract us from our main focus and our main focus is Christ all right and also remember what the Holy Spirit said that his distraction should not be our disturbance or his disturbance should not be our distraction. Mm -hmm. All right. The enemy's disturbance should not be our distraction. All right. Number two. Now, <laughs> number two. All right. Y'all, let me focus. All right. Number two, tune your heart. Tune your heart. OK, to be led by the Holy Spirit, you must tune your heart to his voice. You must listen to his voice and prompting in every situation. Once again, to be led by the Holy Spirit, you must tune your heart to his voice. 
You must listen for his voice and prompting in every situation. All right, so number three, obey what you hear. Obey what you hear, all right? To be led by the Holy Spirit, you must obey what you hear. God doesn't speak to us so we can decide if we are going to obey. God reveals himself to those who are open and obedient to his will. Mm -hmm. Wow, listen to that uh, that last part before the final clause, bros and broets. Check this out. God doesn't speak to us so we can decide if we're going to obey. Wow, once God speak to us, bros and broets, that eliminates the deciding factor. That eliminates the if I or should not, mm -hmm. all right? Because God has given us his word. He has already told us what to do. He speak to you in signs. He speak to you in, in, in music. He speak to you through your friends, through your family. Tune in and you will hear the voice of God. All right. And it's not this Willie, Michael, Johnny. No, you know what I'm saying? God, is, God ain't trying to scare us now. You know what I'm saying? That's the enemy's job. God ain't trying to scare us. He said, come all to me. You know what I'm saying? And I will give you rest. He's not come all to me and I give you nightmares. <laughs> and the final point, he leads step by step. The Holy Spirit leads you step by step. God rarely gives you the big picture or the final destination. Like a spiritual GPS, he only reveals the next step you should take. Wow, like a spiritual GPS, he only reveals the next step you should take, mm -hmm. all right? The more you keep your spiritual ears open and obey what you hear, the more you will find the Holy Spirit speaking to you. He will lead and direct you as never before. He will lead and direct you as never before, all right? Blessings. Oh,